Hello, everyone. This is Heather from Flute Specialists uh, coming to you not live today for the rare recorded interview with composer and flute professor, Dr. Julie Stone. Hi, Julie. Hi, Heather. How are you? <laughs> I'm well. Thanks for joining me today to tell everybody about your new piece that we will be premiering at the NFA convention in 2023 in Phoenix. Uh, called Parallax for alto flute and bass flute duet. Do you want to tell us a little bit about Parallax? Sure. And I really appreciate flute specialists doing this composer commission um, project because it's so exciting to expand the repertoire for alto and bass flute. So I was really excited to get that email. Um, so as I said, uh, it's a piece for alto flute and bass flute duet. So it's intended to expand the repertoire for those low instruments, but also um, you had requested a version for two altos and two basses. So we're talking lots of low flute options here with this piece. Um, and it's a piece that's got uh, standard rhythms and it has some technique to it. and um, I did it that way, well, one, because you said you wouldn't have much rehearsal time, but also it's really good, um, I think, for today's musician that doesn't have much time to rehearse, they can put something together fairly quickly that still embraces the technique. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of my motivation behind it, was what you asked for, <laughs> but then I started going on about uh, how to proceed with that. And um, about parallax, I'm sure people are thinking, what is that? Um, I am, and my husband is, we're really into space type things. And I thought, hmm, the color of the low flutes is really kind of haunting. And I was trying to combine the color with something that might sound appropriate. So I got on the web and I looked up space terms. And so I looked at parallax and I thought, that's, that's intriguing. What is that? And it's really, um, it's, it, it's a perceived difference in position from looking at it from different angles. So I thought, oh, that's great for a duet because you can have different places it starts and different places this voice starts and that sort of thing. So that was kind of the genesis of the piece. So um, I really like that idea. Also incorporating like dissonance and release. So I have a lot of appoggiatura work in there. And they start, the voices start at different moments in time to give you that kind of skewed vision mm -hmm. and oral vision, I guess you could say. So that's the genesis of the piece. I've always been a bit of an, an amateur space enthusiast and that's not a term I'd heard before. How interesting. Um, uh, yes, Flute Specialist is committed to premiering new music and especially for uh, the lesser seen flutes uh, like alto and bass flute. So it's very exciting to expand the repertoire uh, for these low flutes. Uh, have you written anything for alto flute, bass flute, low flutes before? No, this was my first. <laughs> That's exciting. I mean, I have written, actually, I let me take that back. I do have a flute ensemble choir piece that has alto and bass in it, uh, but it's also got piccolo and flute. So this was the first one just exclusively for low flutes. How oh, cool. That's yeah. great. Well, I've been playing the alto flute part and I'm really enjoying your writing. So I think that this is a new thing. Oh, for good. You. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I got it out on my acapella and put it together. And I was saying, okay, does this work? Does this work? I can't imagine being a composer that doesn't play the instruments <laughs> because it's so helpful to do that. So yeah, I only write for flutes. <laughs> <laughs> well, we like when you write for flute. <laughs> uh, so we are premiering three pieces as part of our showcase. Um, 
of the lesser known flutes. And I feel like each of these premieres shows a bit of the composer's own personality. Uh, how do you feel that this piece reflects you and your background, both as a person and as a musician? I really don't know how it reflects my personality, but I really like modal type of music. I like a lot of appoggiatura release type of music and I like vocal music. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I like to combine all that. I think uh, the middle section is very, very vocal and that sort of thing. It's kind of this ethereal space theme <laughs> sort of thing. Um, so, and it, uh, I like the combination of lyrical and technical in a piece. So I tried to do that as well. Um, so that's kind of, you know, what went into it. But I do like to think about, I like when I compose to have a theme and then that gives me the inspiration for the piece. Mm. It's really hard to just think, okay, I want to compose, but having no theme, it's mm. really hard for me to come up with things like that. <laughs> So space and parallax gave me the idea. <laughs> Lovely. Uh, so composing uh, for two people who will be rehearsing that aren't in the same state as each other, uh, will be rehearsing on Zoom like we're on Zoom right now. Uh, that That's definitely a challenge that, that we presented to you. Uh, were there any other compositional challenges that you encountered or perhaps that one was really particularly hard for you? Well, that one is hard, but I figured you guys are, you know, professional musicians. You can, you know, get it if you just see yourselves at the convention and rehearse then. I I'm, I'm, have complete faith in that. Other things that were interesting was I had not done a duet before, believe it or not. So just composing for two voices is much more difficult in my mind than you know, a flute choir or a quartet or something like that, because you have fewer opportunities to do chords, right? So you have to imply certain things. Uh, another thing I found was, and this may sound mundane, but alto flutes in G and bass flutes in C. So I had to think, okay, I'm going to compose the alto in C so I can see how it works, but then I had to transpose it. And then I had to think, okay, does this work with the range? You know, mm -hmm. so there were some interesting things I learned. So I appreciate the fact that you asked me to do that. It's always a learning curve, you know? Um, and yeah, I think those were the biggest things. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so what do you think makes this piece particularly unique? Um, I think, well, we already talked about this, but one of the unique things is that it's got three different iterations between alto bass, two altos, two basses. So it already comes with, you know, flexibility. Mm -hmm. So that's something, you know, it's like, if somebody wants two altos, well, there it is. Um, I I really got into composing um, and we've already talked about this a little bit um, with the pandemic, noticing that there's much less time to rehearse that we had. We were in person kind of quasi, but I found that my students uh, needed pieces that were easier to put together, but still had, you know, technique to them that they, you know, could show off their technical skills. Um, so this piece is in, you know, standard rhythms, but it does have technique in it, which was my goal of doing it. So it still sounds like it's somewhat virtuoso in some places, you know, with those 16th notes, which I'm sure you're looking at. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, uh, so it, it was kind of, you know, a niche that was born out of the pandemic and this is a good thing that came out of the pandemic there were so few things but <laughs> that is something and um it it kind of propelled me to write more pieces like that um mm -hmm. that were a little bit easier to rehearse for you know circumstances like this mm -hmm. wonderful do you have any other projects coming up that you'd like to plug I do. I have a, a piece called Airtime, 
that's coming out. Airtime. Now, this is my from my son's interest. He's a roller coaster enthusiast. Ah. So um, airtime is the term they use for when they're cresting a hill and then you start going down, but you're still up. Yes. <laughs> and so that's airtime. So I thought, what better thing for a flute choir than to do something with airtime? So again, this piece has standard rhythms, but it's technical, you know, all over the place. So I'm thinking that will be fun. It's got piccolo, four flute parts, alto and bass. Fantastic. All right. We'll talk about that yeah. one later for my flute choir. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fabulous. Well, uh, don't forget to come see the premiere of Parallax at our exhibitor showcase uh, by Dr. Julie Stone. And then it will be available for purchase from the Flute Specialist Booth 103 uh, in the exhibit hall and then available on our website as well for purchase. Thank you so much for meeting with me today, Dr. Stone. Uh, it's been wonderful. Thank you, Heather. I appreciate it.